Hi, I'm Dave Crane and welcome to Turbocharge Your Brand TV. I'd like to introduce some very special friends of mine, Merlin Digital. Now Merlin makes really cool gadgets and I know you're wondering how cool are these gadgets? Well remember good old days in James Bond when Q would give him lots of really cool stuff to play with and now he just gets a gun that recognizes his fingerprints? <laughs> well all the other stuff apart from the gun is made by Merlin. Check out their website MerlinDigital.com so what kind of stuff are we talking about? Well, projectors, USB sticks, memory cards that have other functions as well, or even this thing. Imagine having a speaker that you could have small enough to take anywhere that could make big sounds every single place that you go. Let me demonstrate. Here we have the same speaker we're talking about, which is about $80, and my mobile phone, which is now connected to the speaker with Bluetooth. So if I press this, theme tune from Turbocharger Brand TV. Now on the bottom of this you can see see that? A suction cup. So you can put that on any surface. In a boardroom it would turn the table into a speaker. In the kitchen, put it on a microwave it becomes a speaker. Our barbecue, put it on a barbecue and it will melt. But you put it on a wall you get the general idea. So if you're doing a web TV show, imagine having a big orange ball like this one. Big orange ball, speaker, connect it. Ah oh, yeah, how cool is that? So this and more wonderful gadgets, we're going to be giving them away every single week. And all you have to do is register on Turbo Charge Your Brand TV. Meanwhile, check out the great show. It's on the way. Learn something, Turbo Charge Your Life, and have a great time doing it. Turbo Charge Your Brand TV. Turbocharge Your Brand TV. I'm Dave Crane and on this action-packed episode we're going to give you everything you need to really boost your brand. First of all, we're going to talk about your mindset. Three elements. What's your mindset? What's the way that you do business? And also what do you do online? And to that we're going to be talking about celebrity and interviewing an expert on celebrities, Sarah Bladen from OK Middle East Magazine. And on top of that we've got a case study of a famous celebrity who's taken their brand all the way to the top, a real hero of mine. How did they do it? We're going to show you exactly how with this week's episode of Turbo Charge Your Brand TV. is to read books. Obvious I know. But the thing is, when do you get time to read a book? Like this or any other book? Well, I don't. I'm always on the move, I'm always in meetings, I'm always doing stuff, so the book's no good to me. What I recommend instead is to invest in a talking book. Almost every book you could ever want has been committed to audio by the original author or by somebody who's recorded it after they've died. And so literally, getting hold of one of these means you can compress it right down to some format that you can use on the move, but not like this. Instead, put it in your phone. Once you've got the audio, put it in your phone, you can have it on the move. Turn your car into a university. So wherever you're traveling, you can re-educate yourself and learn all the things that you need on the move. Also, you can add podcasts and some great audio too. And once in a while, a bit of music. That's my cool tip for the day. Turn your car into a university using just your phone. Right then, one of the most important parts about turbocharging your brand is to start in your own head. Your mindset is everything, especially when it's positive. I found as a hypnotist one of the most powerful ways of really boosting your mindset is a thing called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Neuro is brain, linguistic is language, and programming is commands. What you think, the images you use, the way you relate to people, and most of all the way you relate to yourself is the way that you will start impacting the outside world. Simple things like the word try. Do you ever try and do something and find it doesn't work out? Well, I know, for instance, as a hypnotist, the word try means attempt to and fail to achieve. So therefore, I know when somebody says, I'll try and do something, it won't work. That try could be, I'll try and meet you for lunch, or I'll try and get that email to you, or I'll try and find out what it is you want from my colleague. I know that when somebody says that, 99% of the time, it's not going to happen. But you're also hampering your own ability to do things when you say, I'll try and do it. Remember, it says, attempt to and fail to achieve. 
So how many times have you tried to do something and it hasn't worked? Instead, make a commitment. You'll either do it or you won't do it. If you are going to do it, then you can focus on it and make it a reality. If you're not going to do it, dump it now and spend time doing the stuff that you're really going to commit to. NLP is a really powerful way of investigating how to make your mind work. And in Tibble Charge, your brand, television, we're going to be going on about that in the next couple of weeks to really impact how you can get more out of your mind on a daily basis. Simple, isn't it? Don't try, just do. And now it's time for this week's case study. With a case study, we take a celebrity, somebody famous online, or somebody who's really achieved success, and we reverse engineer what made them successful. In this case, I want to look at the footballer David Beckham, or Brand Beckham, as he's better known. Not only was David a very successful footballer, but all around him, there is a circus or entourage of success. Whether it comes from sponsorship deals, or it comes from every single movement he makes, the cameras follow him, and they follow his family, and every single thing turns to gold. So how do they do it? Let's take a look at this clip and find out. drawing and I love copying things but seriously that's the worst face I've ever seen. I think it's shocking but <laughs> it's not going to get much better than that. <laughs> Do you ever visualise you winning or anything in your head? You know? Always. I always dreamt of winning the World Cup but not happened yet. Still look back to 98 after the red card that I got against Argentina. What went on in my life and in my family's life after that, I think was very tough. It was probably the toughest moment in my career. I was having death threats. I never felt safe for three and a half years. People used to turn around and they're saying that you've let your country down and you've let your family down, so how does that feel? I don't think I'd ever felt as alone as that, as a person, as a footballer. It can knock a person down so much that they just go under. Outside pubs in London, there was uh, effigies hung of me, and this was on the front of the newspaper. It's just something that sticks in my mind from that time. I'm trying to think what was said about me at the time. And there was a headline of ten lions, one stupid little boy. It's still emotional, isn't it? It's still raw. Yeah. This is a saying that I use all the time and it's true, it is a round world. 98 was just before the World Cup was I was at the top and then after the World Cup I was at the bottom. And then you work yourself back up. The upside for me was the Greece game. Once the game started it was the start of an incredible day for me. It was either going to the World Cup that day or it was going into qualifying games, which none of us wanted to do because the expectations of us. I remember Teddy Sheridan getting a free kick on the edge of the box. And I remember putting the ball down and I remember looking up at the clock and thinking, this is it, you know, this is the only chance I'm going to get now. The only thing I could hear was the man and his drum around about here, I think. And then I stepped back, took the deep breaths, run up. And as soon as it left my foot, I knew it was in. It was the loudest, I think, I've ever heard the fans. It was such a huge moment for everyone. Uh, I remember just running off and being that excited, uh, just jumping up in the air. You know, I could have touched the top of the stadium if I wanted to, because I felt that high. Right, the whole canvas is the idea of the goal. There's the ball in the corner. My celebration and the words, belief, strength and family is what I needed and what I had to get through after 98. Finishes it off. Being in front of a blank piece of paper with experts around you as well, I think that is much more daunting than stepping out in front of 90,000 people playing football.
time now for Ask Dave, and thank you very much to Claire Huskins for contacting me with this question. How do I get more confidence? Well, very simply, confidence is all about self-esteem. And the reason that it seems to be eroding from people is very simple. When you're a child, you have tons of confidence. Any baby will wander around picking things up, having a great time, until they're told not to. As a baby, we're filled with confidence. And actually, it depends on how many times you get told no by your parents and people around you and the outside world as to how you feel about your own self-confidence. UCLA did a survey and they came up with the fact that 400 times a day your average baby is told no, don't pick that up, don't do this. All that adds up to regularly about 150,000 times as a young adult you've been told no as opposed to a few thousand yeses. Now imagine what that does to your confidence and how many times that will affect you when it goes into being a full-blown adult and that gets sunk into your mind. So what do you do about it? How do you get yourself to feel more positive when the real world is catching up and relationships make you feel bad, the boss makes you feel bad, your partner can say things that makes you feel bad or even just the bad weather can lose your confidence? Well, very simple. First of all, a few principles. One's about failure. Do you ever feel like a failure? Well, you've got to reframe the way that you feel about that whole process. Failure is not becoming a failure. Failure does not mean that you're a loser. What failure means is very simple. You had an outcome to amount of effort that you put into an event. So what it will give you back is feedback. So if you look at the event and you look at the effort you put in and the feedback, you might find that if you do it a different way, you'll get a different result. But you didn't fail. The same is true for mistakes. You don't make mistakes. At the time of doing something, you did exactly the right thing with the amount of information that you had, and you're the best person to make a choice about it. And you will be every single time. So bearing in mind those two things, first of all, you don't make, fail, you don't make mistakes, and you don't fail, and then add a third thing to it. What you enjoy that makes you happy. Whatever it is that makes you happy, do more of that. The more happiness you get, the more confidence you get, and as a result of that, your day goes up. If you find a lot of things sap your self-confidence, or you've got negative friends or situations that make you feel bad, avoid them. Get positives. They build up. And even if you've got to imagine that they make you positive, if you act as if they're true, they do become true. Thanks to Clive for writing in. And by the way, Clive, you win yourself a copy of a Jump and Grow Wings system. This system is created to allow you to turbo boost any aspect of your life by mindset and making it feel like you have a happy birthday every single day. And if you want to win yourself a package like that, all you have to do is email me with your question, dave at thelifedesigners.com. Ask me anything about the life of the universe and anything, but especially about how to turbocharge your brand. And you can win these goodies too. change in the last 10 years and has probably never been as important to anybody's branding as right now is how they go onto the internet. Think about it. With the internet you can reach people all around the world. You don't need to see them face to face but if you want to you can Skype them, you can contact them and create a great relationship without ever being face to face. I found that the best way for this of course is social media. How you use your Twitter, your Facebook, your LinkedIn and your YouTube all mesh together. They are the big four. But one of the problems that most people come across is that the fear of public speaking that most people have is actually the same as putting stuff online. They don't want people to see and they're scared whatever they talk about, they might look daft. I think that in order to boost your impact online with social media, you have to think in terms of how can I make things bigger? How can I be confident? But you don't have to be you. You can be anybody you want on the internet. Your profile for each of those different elements is exactly what you program it to be. It doesn't have to be the real you. So your Facebook, put on what you want people to find. On LinkedIn, put on what you want them to find in business. And your tweeting and your YouTube videos should be all related to the image that you want to create online. That might not be the real you, but that doesn't matter. It's exactly what people are going to see. So make it the you that people want. Don't go talking about getting drunk. Don't go talking about whatever you did last night. Talk about what helps you grow your brand and be honest with that. Because what happens is when people start finding who to work with, whether it's to employ somebody or to get somebody for business, they will search your online profile. They'll take a quick glimpse and find out if you're creditable. And if you're not, 
They will dump you like that. So, part of your online game is when you do your social media, make it be you that you want people to find. And that will change the way that you can boost your business and, of course, really turbocharge your brand. It's time for this week's big interview and I thought I wanted to do experiments and find out what makes a celebrity. Well, if you're going to find out what a real celebrity is, why not talk to celebrity makers? And so I talked to Sarah Bladen, the editor of OK Middle East, to find out what makes a celebrity, what makes them tick, and how you too can turbocharge your famous personality and be a celebrity too. I think a celebrity has to have a superstar quality. Something which people perhaps look up to, are in awe of, and, and they want some of that. They want that sort of fame factor. And when somebody decides that they want to become a celebrity, but they might not be in the, the movie world or the music world or, or acting, can you be a celebrity just by simply being good at what you do? I think it has to be exceptional in your field. I think you can be you know, dedicated towards becoming exceptional in your field. But I think it has to be also from within. There's a certain awe about celebrities and famous people. Something you know, which, which not everyone has. And what would get your attention as the editor of OK to start featuring somebody who is an expert in their field? At what point do you start paying attention to them? It is something which, which you can't necessarily put in a formulaic bottle. You know, it, it, they have certain qualities. When they walk into a room, they have presence, they have charisma, and on top of that, they have a huge amount of talent. And of course, there's always an air, an aura of mystery about them as well. Excellent. Perhaps they're not that accessible. So inaccessibility is quite an important part of, of being a celebrity? I would say so. I'd say the, the real celebrities today are those, are those who perhaps aren't on Twitter, perhaps they're not you know, on a reality show. You know, you want to know more about them, you want, you want to know what really goes on in their private lives, but you don't have that access. Can you be a celebrity just using social media and not using conventional media? Um, I think so these days. I think you have, you have the ability to sort of manipulate social media to your, to your own ends. But fame in itself is, 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 is doesn't, isn't enough just to make a celebrity a real celebrity. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go to MerlinDigital.com and have a look at all the wonderful gadgets that you can get access to. And you can also win by registering on this website every single week. We will be giving the opportunity to give a wonderful gift or goodie for you. And you can find out whether you've won or not by going to the fan page on Facebook of MerlinDigital.com. How cool is that? All this stuff and more every single week. Stick around, turbocharge your brand TV.